All right, let's talk about uh, not only uh, talking about uh, instructors, but one of the biggest things we've been noticing is when people take instructors, they base that instructor off if they're the same color as them. Um, we've been seeing a lot of that on YouTube, a lot of that on Instagram, where you have people the same color as ourselves will only take a, a class from a person the same color as them. Um, which then they have a lot of criteria about that. Uh, now the person they take that, uh, let's, I'm just going to say it, for say if the uh, student is black and they want a black instructor, if that black instructor is not, uh, has the same values of, as them politically, socially, um, they will not take a class from that person. If that person has a different point of view from them, they have a tendency to look at that person as the enemy, as uh, the other, or, uh, you know, the famous word, the coon, you know. Um, I usually don't have that problem with uh, any other race except the black race, uh, which is usually is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. um, you, uh, Al can go ahead and elaborate. One of the things that I see is that you're looking for information. And information can come from anywhere. You should not let any stone be unturned. If the stone should happen to be white, turn it over and see what it offers. A lot of times people are afraid to say, I want to go to that class and I'll be the only black. Well, I'm going to tell you, I've survived numerous times of being the only black. In some particular cases, the only black in the entire town that I went to travel to to take a particular course. People who are involved with guns are interested in other people who are involved in guns. You can personalize that and think of your own family. Maybe some people in your family are pro-gun and somebody, some people are anti-gun. That's the same thing in life across the board, across racial color barriers and all that other stuff. So vet your instructor. Find out what that person's values are. Find out what that person um, what they believe in, the political thing. If you don't like that, then leave them alone. But if they have the information that you want, sometimes it's better to suck it up, forget all the politics, and get the basic of that curriculum. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for the information that that person has put together in a lesson plan. I keep going back to lesson plans because if you can't, somebody can't show you a lesson plan of what they're teaching from, they're teaching off the, right out their ass, that's somebody you need to leave alone because they're making it up as they go along. Now, mind you, for impromptu situations, not a training course that somebody pays for, it's okay to make it up out your ass. People like myself and Al, we have been around this game, around 2A, around IDPA, IPSC, anything else, and you get an idea of how things run, we can sit back here and set up this range and run a course. Right now, just, okay, start from here, five rounds from here, three rounds from here, prone, standing, whatever. We can make those courses up as we go along. But when you're getting instruction, it should come from something that's been tried and true and then it has a practical application to the end user, the student. So if that's not the case, leave that alone. Leave that person alone because it has to be something that's done each and every time. I have lesson plans for intermediate, beginners, and advanced. I have lesson plans for, fire, for, for different firearms, from shotgun, combination with pistol, I got pistol separate, I got uh, rifles, semi-automatic rifles, and I have bolt rifles. So all of those things have a separate lesson plan. And if somebody has one lesson plan that they use for everything, that's a fool. And you're now taking a course from a fool. Yeah. So, um, I mean, that, that's some very good points. Uh, and, and, and it shows that if you... I really want because you have to look at uh, firearms training is an investment is an investment in yourself so if you are you're going to take those hard-earned dollars and most of the classes range from 250 and above and you can pay up to a thousand dollars for a class so you don't want to spend that kind of money for a class and be involved in an association or some some group that's basically a um, what do you want to call it, a meet and greet group where mm -hmm. you're trying to find a date, you know, or, you know, you may be trying to find a date in somewhere else, you know, you know, we're not going to talk about that point. That happens. Uh, it happens. 
um, and it just turns into one gigantic social group where you're really not learning your craft and you're not progressing but they're introducing you to all this stuff you need to buy and they're promoting it so you can further their financial career instead of furthering yours you know they're indoctrinate you into a um, uh, you end up becoming a uh, a part of the group where now you're what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you're groupie. Yeah, you're groupie, and they use it's another term they use for a groupie. It's called um, what is it? Um, uh, a follower? No, not a follower. It's well, you know, you become come a part of the group where they now you're like a, a senior member of the group. You know, you can come back and all this stuff. Oh yeah, well, that's another one you got to watch out for. You take a particular course, and in order to take the next level, you have to have come in at this level. So if you've had any informal instruction, right. and you can prove that, why would I go to 101 when I know I am start? I should be at 201? Right. All right. So those, um, it, it, you're looking for a particular word, but I would call it not only a groupie, but also somebody who who's investing in something that they'll never see any outcome from. You'll never see any, any dividends given back to you with skill. Because right. you shouldn't, mind you, review is great. But if you or if you're looking to spend money to learn something new, that's what training is. Training is about going and learning one particular skill and getting a grip on that skill to the point where you can do it by yourself in practice. So you have training when you learn, then you practice what you learn. So when you go to the range, you're not training again. You're learning, or you're, you've already learned it, you're now practicing what you have learned. So that allows you to progress. And when you progress, once you get to a certain level, you can look around and add extra things to your tool belt, as some say, because you can see it and you already have a foundation. But if you don't have a foundation of fundamentally sound techniques and tactics, you're, not, you're just going to uh, swim in the water and go nowhere. You're going to paddle and you're not going to move. Because you don't have the foundations that allow you to excel. And that's the key with getting a good base of fundamental instruction from sight picture, sight alignment, the draw stroke, stance, uh, breath control comes into play in some, in some instances. And those things, once you get those down, you can take it to any other platform that you would like. Right, then you can go from there after you get down to basics. You can start pushing yourself out to the intermediate stuff. Then you can go to advanced where you start moving. You start working with other uh, uh, team members and shooting as a team. Then you can start branching out and say, okay, I'm bored with all this stuff. I can start taking some tactical courses and teaching you how to become more proficient with your rifle and fight with your rifle like as a pistol. Mm -hmm. Or you can, you, they got medical classes you can take. There's a whole vast of stuff out there that you can actually go out and take, but don't limit yourself to, okay, I don't like that guy because he's not the same color as me. I don't like that guy because he don't believe in the same political affiliation as me. Uh, they may know something. Mm -hmm. So go there, humble yourself, and just keep your mouth shut. If they're teaching it wrong, don't say anything. Learn what you have to learn as long as it's not unsafe. If it's unsafe, pack your bags up and leave and ask for a refund. But if it's if it's a safe course and if they're teaching something wrong that's not the way you learned it, uh, it could be a little bit different. Learn from it. Put it back in your back in your mind and say, you know, I'm not going to use that. Uh, I'm going to use what I know and uh, just go on. Don't try to fight the instructor out there on the... Uh, on the course, I've seen people come out on the courses, and they uh, you teaching something, and they want to interject their point of views on what you're trying to teach. Um, this goes back to vetting. If you get the course curriculum and you read it and you understand it, you know ahead of time this is not for me.